Now this video won't make much sense unless you watch the uh, students tea test video. So if you haven't done it, not stopping you watching it, but it won't make much sense if you, you are. Okay, so null hypothesis and p-values. Well, talk about the null hypothesis first. Sometimes it's it's written like that, uh, an H with an O, or H, H with a zero actually, the null hypothesis. Now the way to think of this is, um, I suppose the, <laughs> the null hypothesis is like saying, when you get a, a set of results, if you do an experiment, you get some data, the null hypothesis would say that nothing is happening. So if I decided to compare uh, whether eating uh, mushrooms could make you run faster and I got a group of people and I fed them mushrooms every day for two years and I got another group of people and I didn't feed them any mushrooms and you know, I, I measured how, how well they, they ran 100 metres and things. Uh, obviously we don't expect mushrooms probably to, to make much difference. The null hypothesis says nothing's going to happen. There's, there's no difference between eating mushrooms and not eating mushrooms compared to how fast you can run. Okay. Now, generally what we're looking for in um, an experiment is we are looking for something to work. You know, we, why would we feed mush people mushrooms unless we thought there was some kind of benefit to it? So um, the, the positive hypothesis, if you like, is something is happening. Okay, that, That's really what we want when we do experiments. Yeah, we're, we're looking for things. We're not necessarily looking for nothing to happen. Um, now, for reasons that I won't bother going into here, because it's bit long-winded um, we can't easily prove well we don't prove things in science scientists don't use this word prove what they do is disprove things so what we try and do is disprove the null hypothesis in other words we say the null hypothesis that nothing is happening is wrong in fact something is happening okay but we don't we don't phrase it in those words we, we say that we will reject the null hypothesis so um, in my example, my rather silly example, I said mushrooms are going to make you run faster. And after two years of study, it turned out it made no difference. I would have to accept the null hypothesis. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. Maybe though, it turns out that something interesting was happening, and people who ate mushrooms were suddenly you know, turning out for the Olympics. In which case, I would reject the null hypothesis. I would say something is happening. The problem is, it's not always easy to see or to tell exactly what the thing is that is happening it might be the mushrooms it might be something else i'd not considered but that that's what we basically end up doing now on the the uh, student t test video i use the example of comparing two means uh, and i use the example of some hypothetical i should say hypothetical um, some imaginary um, drug for hair growth okay and i said you know we're going to compare um, how how it compared between these two groups, an old version of the drug and the new version of the drug. Is the new drug ver the version of the drug any better? And I made up some numbers. You know, that was the mean number of new hairs grown on the old drug. Uh, that was the mean number of the new drug. And I come up with these values. Now, we might look at that and say, well, this value is bigger, therefore the new drug works. Yeah, but we, we can't really say that. We can't say just by looking at those numbers. Maybe we had an odd sample of people for some reason. Maybe this was an odd sample of people who just didn't respond to the drug. We don't know. So what the t-test does, it will compare these two things and it will give us a value, okay, called the t-value. Now, what we need is some kind of way to say, what does that t-value... What the t-value is going to tell us is how likely is it that this difference that we've got is, is a real difference, okay? It's... Another way to put it is, I suppose to say, um, if this is a real value, if that's a real difference, if, if you do get more hairs growing on this one, um, how likely is that to have happened? Um, perhaps I'm not explaining this very well, but uh, okay, maybe give you a practical example of it in a second. That, that might make more sense. Um, the version in the book, which um, uses petiole length, we worked out a t value of um, 2.0, so was it 2.0? Yeah. Okay. So that was our t value. Now, what you then do is you get a big table of these values, and they've they've, they've worked out. They're already calculated for you, and what you have to do is identify where your t value is in this. Now, in order to do it, we need to work out something called the degrees of freedom, or df. And what this 
is showing you is um, the more data you gathered, you know, the more numbers of uh, things you, you tested, the better chance you have that your results are going to be real. So this is kind of what the, the degrees of freedom are telling you. The more data we get, the more confident we can be of our uh, result. And the way you work out the degrees of freedom is you take n1 plus n2, the number of data in one, number of data in two, and you take two away from it. Now, if you look back at the video, if you remember it, n1 was actually 10, and n2 was 10. 10 plus 10 is 20, minus two. Our degrees of freedom equal 18, okay? Um, once you start getting very big numbers, you, you can pretty much ignore the degrees of freedom. Um, but, you know, there it is, that's that's what we get. Now, at the back of your textbooks, you can find these in, in various places. If you can see that, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, so it's losing focus. Um, what we've got here, once it works out its focus, I'm sorry, I've lost focus on this. There we go. Um, but what we've got here is, if I look down this column, it says degrees of freedom. And down here it says 18. Okay. And across the top, it's difficult for you to read, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it over here, I think. Um, they have these values. It says um, 0 0.10. 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.04. Okay, and what these are are called p-values, and they actually represent percentages. And let's try that. Um, that value there, 0 0.1, absolutely represents 10%. 0.05 is the same as saying 5%. 0.01 is the same as saying 1%. 0.01 is the same as saying 0.1%. Okay. What these p-values tell us is the chance that the t number we got, uh, sorry, the chance that the these averages are genuinely different. Okay. What we say is we assume the null hypothesis is true. So what we say is, for these two numbers, we're going to say, let's say the null hypothesis is true, there is no difference between them. If I actually got that value, how likely is it to actually occur just by random chance? All right, that's what we're doing. Um, if I put these other numbers in, so 18 degrees of freedom, I'm not going to write them all in, but I'll write these in for you, these ones. So 18 degrees of freedom, 8.7, 2.10, 2.88, and 3.92. Okay, that, that's what it looks like. I've just annotated this table for you. Now, our value was 2.07. You might say, just a minute, 2.07 isn't in the table. No, it isn't, but it's it's slightly below that, and it's above that, so it's, you know, it's going to be in here somewhere. In other words, that value is roughly going to come out, I don't know, 6, 6% or something, 0.06. Now, just by convention, um, what often happens in science is we use this 5% value, or 0.05, it's the same thing, as a kind of cutoff point. And what we say is, if our T value is lower than that number there, for the, however many degrees of freedom we've got, then we stick with the null hypothesis. We say, no, do you know what? There wasn't really a difference. It just, for some reason, you know, that's grown more hair. Those people grew more hair, but it's something that could have just happened randomly. We don't know what it is. If your number is bigger than two, you know, even if it was 2.11 or 2.12, it's still bigger than that number. In that case, we reject the null hypothesis. And all we're saying there is there is a genuine difference in these mean values that number is genuinely bigger statistically than that mean and there's only a five percent chance that it arose by chance there's only a five percent possible it still could be that the null hypothesis is true there's a five percent chance that it's true okay but what we're going to say is i'm prepared to accept a five percent chance and i'm going to say I think I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. The further along you go, the bigger this number gets. You know, if we had, if our t value was 
well, then we're above the 1%. We can say, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. There's only really a 1% chance that the null hypothesis is actually correct. Still a 1% chance. This number here never goes down to zero. There's always a chance that your results um, have just happened randomly. You know? So there's always that chance. But the bigger this T value is, the less likely that is to be true. The more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, I'm not sure I've explained all this the best possible way. So uh, please comment or, you know, to my students, um, speak to me or, or, or come and see me if it's not clear. It's not an easy thing to do. The simple way to think of it is the bigger this T value, the more confident you can be that something has happened. The smaller the T value, the more likely we are to say there's no real difference. We're going to accept the null hypothesis. But how do you know what is big and what is small? We just set it at this 5% value, depending on how many degrees of freedom you get. If you look at one of these tables, it varies. So for example, with only a few degrees of freedom, you've got to get a really, really big T value because with small sample sizes, you, you're less confident of your overall results. Big sample sizes, um, you know, once you're starting to get over about a T value of about two, you start rejecting the null hypothesis. But you would be expected to use one of these tables. They would give you the table. You would have to work out the degrees of freedom and then explain it. And explain it in terms of accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. Accept it, nothing's happening. Reject it, something has happened. Okay? And in this case, this case the 2.07, we would accept the null hypothesis.